Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. And today's video I actually got from a subscriber of mine. They suggested it, but it is such a diverse topic, such a big topic, I decided to split it up into three sections. The subscriber asked how to summon ancestors, uh, deities, and guardian angels, which is a good question and is definitely something I can answer all of them. Um, but we're going to start off with summoning ancestors in this video. Now, if you don't know what ancestors are, they're basically your family that came before. They've lived, they've died, and now they're just a part of your family, family's tree history. So, um, why would we summon them? Well, they lived in an older time before us. They've lived before us. They have a lot more experience about a lot of things more than us. Uh, we could call upon them for advice and guidance to help guide us into a new step in our life. If they were a, a loving family member, that is, they would definitely want to help you grow and succeed and prosper. And um, that's perfect. But you got to say, um, when it comes to ancestors, I would say be specific. Because we all know that there are some messed up families out there. And even in my family, there's quite a few people who would rather not be around and uh, they're still living. But there's also been some unsavory people in the past. And those are not the people, the ancestors, you want to call upon. They were not balanced people. You want someone who was a little more in balance with life. So that is why you must be specific in this. Another reason we could call upon ancestors is um, for maybe knowledge on a particular subject that we need, you know, that we don't know, know if we're going the right way, um, to get answers to certain questions. Sometimes ancestors will appear to you in your dreams. And especially if you had a, a real strong and loving connection with this family member, that is even better. It provides a signal a connection signal with this family member which makes it easier for them to communicate with you even in the afterlife. Um, I personally have never had an ancestor contact me in a dream. As for summoning ancestors, I have not. Um, it's just that there really isn't anyone in my family um, since I've been born that I have really come to know or love because I never met them. And there's been a lot of, you know, people who've had, you know, um, drug issues, who've had uh, drinking issues. You know, there's a lot of, you know, a darker side to my family. Um... There are some people that I I wish to get in contact to, like um, my great-great-grandma, uh, Azalee, who was a Cherokee Indian, and um, I, I wanted to, you know, see if she could teach me anything about the Cherokee way, um, maybe some of their uh, mystical... Uh, rituals and traditions, but she died long before I was born. So, you know, she would definitely be one I would love to contact, but I have not as of this video. But I do know how to connect with ancestors. It's the same with connecting with um, guardian angels or deities. There's different ways about going about it, but it's basically the same thing with just a few differences so <clears throat> like I said you must be specific is there anyone in mind that you feel like you may want to contact because you have a question for them or you want to see them again and 
you uh, may even get some help from your family. Your family may know something about their roots. Uh, maybe there's an old photo album. Maybe they have a copy of their family's tree. Um, you know, one of those things. Or maybe you can look it up in the hall, like a hall of records or maybe a library. But you have to have a specific name in mind to do that and I I don't know anything about going about that or you can try the ancestry.com if you actually believe in that personally I don't I really think they just take your money and then spin a wheel and then I don't know but you know if you want to try it that that's your deal I don't trust it um I did on one occasion try to contact my ancestors and I didn't have anyone in mind but it didn't work out exactly as planned. So it was Halloween. My family had taken my little cousin to go trick-or-treating. So I had the backyard to myself. And it was, uh, it was just getting dark. So I set up um, one of the little fold-up tables. And I started getting things together. Uh, creating an altar for the goddess Styx. She is the uh, primordial Greek goddess of the River of the Dead, um, Unbreakable Oaths, and also she's a goddess who reigns over hatred. Now, um, that may sound bad, but I will explain it in a different video. I will explain all about her. Anyway, so I set everything up, and Halloween is supposed to be the time of year when the veil between the mortal world and the spiritual world disappears and the dead can come back to earth uh, and contact the living if they want. So I thought it was perfect. Now, I personally believe that Halloween, it's not just a day. It's its a month. It may even be two and a half months, depending. But I'll, I'll get into that in another video. But anyway... So I, I lit the candles and I, I contacted Styx and I knew she was there. And I asked her, I'm like, if you can and you know of any of my ancestors that wish to contact me right now or maybe in, when I sleep tonight, I would be greatly appreciated if they have any advice for me. Or maybe if they wish to speak to me, maybe the ones who never met me, do they want to meet me? Please make, let them make themselves known. You know, and I didn't get anything in that ritual. And I didn't, I slept perfectly well without a dream that night. Um, so I'm guessing that any and all relatives can be one of many things. Knowing the ones that, you know, had problems, they might be earthbound because of their heavy negative energy. They might have already moved on and uh, reincarnated by now. So that there's always that, you know, if you... Uh, if you even believe in reincarnation. So there's always that chance. But I'm going to give you guys an example on how to contact a desired ancestor. And you can use the same for an ancestor of yours. Before we begin the process of making contact with an ancestor, you have to make sure you, your mind, and your energy is in sync and balanced. Now, how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of things. One is by taking a shower or bath. Getting yourself in a relaxed state eases tension and negative energy. And it's always a good idea to wash before doing a ritual. I found that it is actually better. You feel better when doing a ritual. When you're clean, when you feel clean, you're all good. And it really removes that feeling of filth and negative energy. 
Um, then there is using the salt, lemon, and purified water uh, mixture that I taught you guys in previous videos. You can use that. Take your fingers, close your eyes, obviously, and just start flicking it on yourself. <clears throat> you can do this with clothes or without, depending on what you feel like. Just make sure it gets, it touches your skin. Make sure that it really gets in there and absorbs into your skin. This will allow the positive energy from the mixture to stay on our bodies while we do the ritual. And it takes a long time for energy to diminish, so you should be good at least for this ritual. Another way is by using blessed and or charged incense or sage. You can also use different uh, herbs, like I've used cedar for the uh, enchantment of the dolls. I've used palo santo, which is the holy wood. Um, you can use a number of different things. You just got to do your research. But <clears throat> sage is uh, definitely the number one. And you basically just <clears throat> burn the edges, let it smoke up, smudge yourself. And while you're doing this, say, I cleanse myself of negative energy. I now reset old energy and bring in new energy. And you let the smoke get everywhere from head to toe to reset your body's energy. Doing any of those things can make a big difference. Now, I'm going to show you how we would set up an altar of the dead. All right, I know you guys can't see my face. I just really wanted you to see the altar. Um, the altar doesn't have to be that detailed. There's just a certain number of things that are a definite that are definitely going to help you uh, bring success in your communication with your ancestor. So, you're going to want at least one or two white candles. Uh, the color uh, white in mysticism stands for purification. So, um, and also, it wouldn't hurt to charge them or bless them with your energy, and I've taught you how to do that. If you don't know, pause this video and uh, watch all of my videos up to this point or else you're going to be real confused. All right, so yeah, one or two blessed and or charged white candles. You're going to want some uh, blessed and charged incense. Now what this is going to do is it is going to provide a little extra protective energy. You're going to want to fill the incense with a an aura of protection so that you don't uh, communicate with the wrong being or a deceptive demonic entity. Uh, so that is going to clean the air. And that's what the candles are going to do too. They're not only going to add protection, but they will also serve as a light, which will draw the ancestors' energy should they come to your altar. Another thing you're going to want is a picture of the intended ancestor. Only do one at a time. This isn't a family reunion thing. This is just one person at a time. Or else it gets real complicated. Um, and on this altar, aside with their picture, it's also a good idea to have things that they liked to do in life. If they were a person who really loved money and material things, obviously put a couple of you know dollars on the altar. Uh, if they liked a certain animal or statues, if they liked antiques, put that on there. Um, their favorite perfume, maybe a scented candle, which was their favorite scent. If they liked coffee, maybe brew some coffee and put it on. You know, make them feel comfortable. If you make this so plain, they're not going to come. They're going to have, you're going to have much less of a chance of communicating with them. So you're going to want to make the altar appeal to them. Make it feel comfortable for them. After all, they are your family. 
All right. So now we will begin the summoning. Now this is only going to be an example. I'm not actually calling upon uh, an ancestor because like I told you, I don't really have anyone intended in mind besides Azalee. And um, I am not ready to communicate with her yet. I don't really know much about her, and I need to get some more information from my family um, to see if there was something she liked that I could add to my altar, but we'll see. All right, now before we start, there's one additional step, and you can never be too careful. Whenever you're doing spirit communication, you want to make sure that you are completely focused on the person you want. If your mind scatters just a little bit, it could end up attracting the wrong entity. So, one thing I do to help before any ritual, no matter if it's spirit communication, deity communication, what have you, I close my eyes, get into a light meditative position. Once you're ready, look above you, see in your mind's eye the ceiling of the room you're in. Now imagine this light. It's super bright. It can illuminate the darkest shadow and it can get into any crevice. It can pass through every single thing in the house, the foundation, everything. And this light is going to shimmer through the ceiling and it's going to get brighter and brighter until it envelops everything in the house including you uh, the altar everything and as you're envisioning this light call to it I call to the purification of the bright spiritual light may it pass through and diminish any negative energies that have clung to anything in this house. May it cleanse this place, especially me and my altar. And may it reset our energy to good and positive and warm energies. As I will it, so shall it be. And then you're going to envision the light slowly going back up into the ceiling and then dimming out. And as this is happening, you might even feel the light shrink back up and go into the ceiling. You know, you'll feel that energy shift. You will see it and feel it. All right, now that that's done, once again, get into a meditative position. Take a few deep breaths. Release as much stress as you can. Make sure you're as comfortable as you can. I had to crack my back. And you will begin as follows. I call upon my ancestor, so-and-so. Please come to this altar now. I call to my ancestor, so-and-so. Please come to this altar now. I call to my ancestor, so-and-so, and ask them to come to my altar now. And uh, say this a minimum of three times, but you can say it more if you need be. You definitely would like to say it until you can feel their energy, and you will feel something enter. And while you're doing this, envision the family member. It's a good idea to have a visualization. Take a look at the picture if you need a reference and then close back your eyes and then call to them mentally. All right, so continue to do this. You'll already have your candles lit, your incense lit, and all you have to do is ask them to come and if they want to, they will. Um, and should you feel them, you will feel another person. 
you will. You may not see them, but you will feel them. If you close your mind, I mean close your eyes, and you try to focus in on your third eye, you may see them in your mind's eye. It's worth a shot. Sometimes I see deities that way. I have more experience with um, summoning deities and angels rather than ancestors. So, um, but it works similar what? First, before you ask them any questions, thank them for coming. Tell them to enjoy the offerings that you set for them. And then, begin to ask your questions. Ask for a sign. You know, any question, you know, and it's up to them whether they want to answer it. Sometimes you never know. The answers may be cryptic. Or maybe you may not get anything at the altar, but maybe when you sleep the na um, that night later, you may see them in your dream and they may answer your questions then. It may be easier for them. You never know. It really depends on who the person is. And you're, you know, make sure you ask them all the questions. And then, uh, once you're done, thank them once again. Tell them to stay as long as they want to enjoy the offerings. And then end the session. That's it. I know it may seem a little too simple. It really is simple, you know. It, it's not rocket science. It's barely spiritual rocket science. It's really easy. All you're trying to do is contact a deceased relative to get some guidance, some advice, or some answers to questions you have. It really is simple, and it's easy to do whether you're a beginner in magic or advanced. And the risk involved, if you follow my um, cleansing methods, there should be very little risk involved. Now, that's not to be said. Make sure you know who this person is or you have an idea of who this person is. Ask your relatives, hey, uh, do you remember so-and-so? What were they like? And if they were like, oh, no, they, they were not a good person to be around, uh, you wouldn't like them if they were around today and they just weren't good people, don't do it. Because most likely, they're the same way in death as they were in life. Don't touch it. Now, if you feel like a negative uh, family member is trapped, maybe on this plane, it's okay to pray for them. In fact, praying for the dead is really, really good. It provides them with extra vibration so that they may find their way in the afterlife. And no matter how much hatred you may have for a family member that may have done you or your family wrong, we have a responsibility as the enlightened to help these poor souls on their way so that they may reincarnate and learn the lessons of this life so they may do better in the next and I'm completely serious about this. I know. And there's there's quite a few family members who I'm like, oh, they can just go to hell. Well, then I'm like, you never know what this person's life was like. You don't know how their childhood was like. You know, what happened to them in their life. Every, no one's perfect. No matter how much you may despise this person, that's why a lot of people instead of getting mad or confrontational with people they don't like they'll be like I pray I'll pray for you because they know the value of sending them good vibes even if they're not sending the same back prayer never hurts anyone and it can help keep that in mind that being said um, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for joining me, and um, don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Please subscribe to my channel and share this with as many people as you can, on as many social media platforms as you can. I want to get this out to as many people as I can to help uh, teach people and help educate people on the subject of spirituality and or magic. Thank you so much.
Bye-bye.